Hi there, welcome back. So I just recorded a video talking about a 1099 and what it is and how do you know if you need to file one and I just realized that I need to file my 1099s for this year for one of my companies. So I decided to do it with you so you can see my process. I personally do it through QuickBooks Online and I actually only have one vendor that I need to file a 1099 this year. I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to blur all the information that I need to blur to put this online but we're gonna give it a shot so I'm gonna be sharing my screen and kind of just doing it and talking through the process so I hope this works okay so we are on my QuickBooks account this is one of my companies and we only we're pretty small we only have one vendor that needs to receive a 1099 this year and how do I know that this vendor needs to receive a 1099 it's because I walk myself through a decision three process a decision Decision three that I created and I uploaded in my last video I'm gonna upload it in this one as well so in this other video that I'm gonna link somewhere here on the screen I talk about what is a 1099 we discussed that the most common type for small business owners is a type called the 1099 NAC that you file for most people that you paid over $600 in the year however there are a few exceptions like there's a a decision process that you need to go through for every vendor to make sure you do need to file a 1099 for the person and the process is four or five questions really so it's really short but I created this decision three so we can evaluate this so first question is this person a W2 employee like a normal regular payroll employee no this person is not and they provided services to me not products so I am going to go with the yes then did I pay over $600 for this person in the year of 2024 and the answer is also yes. So I'm gonna click yes here. How did I pay her? So the two things that I need to take care of and worry about is did I make payments via credit cards, debit cards, PayPal, Venmo, things like that? And no actually, like I, I didn't. I pay her through ACH, like I just kind of like ACH her the money through bank accounts. So I'm gonna go to the next level of this. Is this total that I pay her still above $600. This question is here because many times we pay a vendor half through PayPal and half through ACH cash check and the portion that we pay this person through cash check ACH wire needs to be $600. So in my case it is. So I am going to click yes and then this is one of the last steps. Is this vendor incorporated or filing as a C corp or an S corp? If you don't know what it is, you need to check the Form W-9. I'm gonna do a quick break in here to explain what a Form W-9 is in case you haven't heard of it. So this is the official IRS website. Let me zoom in in here. It is a request for a taxpayer identification number. So if you need to formally request someone for their tax identification, their social security or their FEIN, you use this form called a W-9. So in here in highlighted say use form W-9 to provide your correct taxpayer information to the person who is requesting to file an information return which a 1099 is an information return with the IRS to report for example income paid to you real estate transactions mortgage interest paid so rule of thumb is for every vendor that you work with you should be requesting a W-9 you kind of just email the person and say hey can you please provide me your W-9 you can go to the IRS website and this is what the form looks like it's like a four page paper document Five actually is six so it's six pages but the only thing that is important to you and the vendor is the first page where they're gonna fill out their name so if I was filling out my company's name for example I would include it here if there's a DBA you're gonna include it here and then this is the part that is important to you as a small business owner filing a 1099 to this contractor is what they completed in here if the person said that they are a either a C Corp you can only choose one of those or an S Corp or there are an LLC filing as 
as a C Corp or filing as an S Corp, you don't need to send them a 1099 NAC. However, if it's any other option, which mine is, in my case, this person completed with a individual sole proprietor, you would have their address, you have, in this case, their social security number because it's an individual sole proprietor. Most individual sole proprietors don't have an EIN, but they could. So you get whatever it's in here, either their social or their EIN, and make sure this is signed in here and dated. And this is the form, this is the information that you use to then go back to the decision three and see is this vendor incorporated or filing as a C Corp or S Corp. In my case, this person is not. This person is a sole proprietor. So then I know that I have to prepare a form 1099 NAC NAC to this one specific vendor. I kind of went through this very fast because I just recorded a video going into this in more detail. Again, I am linking this decision three that I created for free below so you can download it. Actually, it's not a download. You can get the link and you can go through it yourself for every single vendor that you have. And this is, I believe, an easy way for you to identify do I need to send a 1099 NAC or I don't. Okay, we concluded that I must send this person a 1099. What am I gonna do next? I need to make sure that I have this person's information on QuickBooks because QuickBooks, inside of QuickBooks, QuickBooks is an accounting software. They have the ability to prepare the 1099s for me and file it electronically. What does it mean to file this electronically? It means that they will help me complete the form and they will send a copy to the IRS and a copy to my freelancer, to my contractor. And you could do it manually if you have less than 10 1099s to file this year. If not, you must do electronically. There are tons of softwares for you to do it, but I am going to use QuickBooks and that's what I'm gonna show you right now. So the first thing that I want to do is to make sure that I have this person's information correctly. So I am going to go into my vendor step and again, I'm going to try to blur all this because this is not information that you should be seeing. So I am going to find this contractor and then when I enter any vendor into the system, I add their name, their email, I add their address because sometimes they will receive a mail, like a letter with their 1099 instead of just an email version and here I add their taxes which again I took the taxes from the W9 so the person sent me the W9 I got their tax ID which is either their FEIN or their social and because I know that this is a vendor that I should be tracking for 1099 because I know that it's a person that I'm not paying via credit card I know that it's a freelancer and is not a contractor I know that they are selling me services and not goods I already marked track for 1099 because that helps me at the end of the year, which is now when I need to do this, to look at all my vendors who need to receive one. So this is good, I'm gonna save. And I did that for all of my vendors. And that's why I know that I only have one that I need to file a 1099 this year because throughout the year, when I was adding vendors and making payments to freelancers, I was adding their tax ID and I was adding the check mark of track or don't track for a 1099 and here we are so we are in the position that i have all my vendors data organized in the system i have their tax ids and i did the decision three that i know that for this one vendor i do need to send a 1099 nac this year so here we are so i am going to go into the tax portion of quickbooks and i'm going to click 1099 filing so here it says the fiscal year that i want to prepare this this is 2024 and then in here it says let's review your recipients and prepare your 1099s we can help you out during the 1099 season great sign me up important dates the deadline to send this to the freelancer and to the IRS is January 31st QuickBooks is open until May 7th probably because of other 1099s there's many types of 1099s out there but you need to do this by January 31st so we're gonna go to prepare 1099s and then here are my options and because I only have one I know who she is I'm gonna do it myself so I'm gonna pay a little less money so I confirmed my company's legal name 
name and I confirm my company's FEIN that it's here. So I'm going to move to the next phase that is confirm and start filing. So this part, what it's asking, it's for me, because I chose the option that I'm gonna do it myself, I am going to select the accounts that the freelancers who need to be sent 899 are in my actual PL account or balance sheet, but mostly PL. So then this is I'm adding here. It's asking like which box in the form 1099 I need it to be filled out and this is a non-employee compensation box one move to next so I found my person in here I found the vendor that I knew that I needed to find this for this is all gonna be blurred so you're not gonna see anything regardless but pretty much what QuickBooks is asking is the name of the freelancer that it's pulling from my records, the email, the address, their tax ID, and the total amount that I'm reporting, which is the total amount that I pay them in the year of 2024. So I just double checked that this is actually what I pay them and it's all good, so I'm gonna click next. So QuickBooks is giving me a total of one 1099 NAC, zero miscellaneous, and I am going to preview this 1099. So I have the name of my company, I have my address, which is correct. I have the taxpayers, the recipients 1099. I have their name. I have their correct address and I have the correct amount in here. So I'm just checking the actual 1099 that QuickBooks drafted for me and this looks correct. So then I am going to click next. So you've met the requirements for recipients in these states. This specific recipient is in the state of Minnesota. They are federal ready, so they combine their applications. And it says, we'll file federal only. You only need to file with Minnesota in the rare case you've withheld Minnesotan state taxes from the recipient's wages, which I haven't. I did not withheld any taxes, federal or state, so I don't need to do it. QuickBooks does not support state tax withholding. So I'm going to read it again just for myself. And you have to do that depending on the state that your freelancer is at. Next. Okay, so here is the last part of this process. QuickBooks is giving me the payment option. One is giving me the option to e-file only, which is what I'm gonna do. The other one is pay contractors. The next day, direct deposit, I am paying the contractors myself. So I am going to this, I'm gonna continue to e-file. And then my business credit card is already in here. So I am doing the one form, I'm gonna purchase an e-file. And that is it. Way to go we'll handle those 1099s from here track their status with the IRS by going into the tax and finding 1099s filings and I the last thing I'm gonna do I am going to download copies of this for my own records and save it so that is pretty much it and I know that because I was filing this myself I was going through it and reading a few times to make sure I was doing it correctly but as you can see it's pretty simple so just to recap what you'd have to do because I actually think my case is very rare I only had one person but even if you have thousands of people the process is the same you will get everyone's W9 ideally before you even start working with them you'd have their W9 so you don't have to track them afterwards if you didn't ask for anyone's W9 what I would do I would create a list of all the vendors that you pay for and the amount that you pay this year if you don't have this in QuickBooks you would have to create an Excel sheet a Google Sheets and kind of track it manually go to your bank account records for the name of the freelancer and the vendor and the amount that you pay them then second you would go through the decision tree that is linked down below this video to see if you do have to file a 1099 to this person or if you don't for everyone who you do you will reach out to this person and ask for their w9 information so then you would have their correct tax id their tax id is going to be either their social security or the fein for their company then you will add that information into your system if you're using QuickBooks like me you add to the vendors profile make sure their address is correct their name is correct and their tax information is correct and then finally the last step you will go into the QuickBooks session that it says file for 1099 and you literally go through the steps just like I did click through the accounts click through the vendors if you have the Excel spreadsheet with all the vendors make sure everyone is getting one like make sure the numbers match and then once it's filed 
filed, you save this for your records, you send this to your vendor if the system didn't send it automatically. I am just gonna send it to her regardless because I have one person and that is it. I really hope this was helpful. If it was, please give me a thumbs up. And the whole reason I created this channel when I am recording videos like this is to provide financial clarity to other small business owners just like me who perhaps don't have the financial background that I was lucky to have and I know that some of this stuff is just very new to many people and it can generate quite a lot of anxiety if you haven't done this before and suddenly we're talking about the IRS and numbers and taxes and it's kind of overwhelming. So this is why I'm recording those videos and if you are interested in topics like this, financial clarity, understanding the numbers for your business, subscribe to the channel so every time I drop one of those you will get a notification and yeah, I hope to see you around the channel. Bye for now.